see me. Uh, we don't have any free gifts, or you are free to leave now. We are going to speak only about some kind of communications and techniques that we use to, to make our communications more secure. We're going to speak about several clients. Uh, we will see a little bit vulnerabilities of Snapchat, and we are going to then uh, speak about WhatsApp. So this is who we are. We are both from Spain. Uh, I know some uh, of you. I am speaking at, at Vlad Hat and Defcon and so. I, I write a blog, you know, that kind of shit. And Pablo works for R&D, uh, for Obtenet, this is a Spanish security firm. Um, he has uh, worked, uh, we worked together in this research of WhatsApp. We presented the first uh, release on Blackcat. And uh, I, I would like to apologize because we are a little bit tired because uh, we have a very hard night. Uh, I, know <laughs> I know you're laughing because we are from Spain. Did you think that we like party? like this way, but it wasn't, <laughs> I promise, I promise it wasn't really because of this. It was something more like this. <laughs> you know, the God of Demos punished us, so uh, I would like to thank, I don't know if he's, he's here, Mike Bowen. Mike? Mike, 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 Mike is not here, for uh, giving us some kind of access point and some things we, we need to, for the talk, for the talk, uh, like about 12, at night, so we're going to speak about uh, instant messaging. Do you know that uh, uh, people used to uh, send SMS, and now we are talking about uh, that the 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 quantity of the of the instant message uh, are double the the traditional message. It's like a 23 billion of losses for the telecommunications company, and some facts about the this kind of. Uh, of new technology to communicate each other are that most of these applications are used by teens, you know, because it lets you uh, save some money. You use it in a, in a smaller cycle because you have maybe 400 of friends on Facebook, but you only speak to about 5 or 10. That's what uh, instant messaging comes to because it lets you connect directly. And it's something that uh, works on the present. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. This is not the case for Facebook or for Instagram when you put your photograph when you were at school. And some of these applications we have worked are like, you know, a, a quick is WhatsApp, it's a, a Viber. We have uh, analyzed several of them and, and you know there are some flows, there are some identity thefts. Uh, we are speaking about lack of encryption. There are several uh, clients that, that, that doesn't use the encryption well. WhatsApp uh, has a very uh, important flow. We will see it uh, later. And there are some applications that doesn't use uh, a certificate pinning, for example, for the HTTPS connection. Some of them let you upload malware to the cloud, so you can just put it the, your file into any client server and then throw it to your, to your big team. And we'll see that we have uh, one way of doing a, a denial of service. So, first of all, we are going to speak about WhatsApp. Uh, uh, sorry, Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat is now more present because you know that the uh, there was a leak about the the that base. Uh, Snapchat works for iOS, works for Android. It's some kind of application to chat, maybe with another person. You really know this only for 16. So send. Uh, uh, photographs or uh, nude photographs of you to your girlfriend. And this feature that Snapchat has is like the pictures are self-destructing. So you can only see the picture for a short time and then it should disappear. Some of, uh, some of the statistics for this are that there are a 100 million user re register, uh, there are uh, 400 million snaps a day, there's a huge traffic. There is a 25% in the UK using Snapchat. Um, in Norway, there is half of the population that have mobile phone installed. And this problem is original from the United States. But you know, uh, Snapchat only has one job. He only had to erase all that images you sent to your, to your partner. There has been some application like Snapchat. There's an application that lets you save the images you receive, and the other person, the sender, doesn't know it. Uh, the hackers at the Gibson Security Group published a uh, full disclosure of the API. The Snapchat team 
thought that it wasn't very important, and several weeks ago, uh, some person leaked like a four, uh, four million uh, uh, contacts of the database. And well, Snapchat, you know, he didn't apologize at first. Later, he, they apologize. They say they're working, uh, fixing this. So we wanted to see if we could do anything, anything else. So this is the way you send the snaps. The way you send the snaps, you have to send your username. You use a timestamp, a request token, uh, the data for the photograph. And we try to make some kind of magic, like, hey, let's change the account. Let's see what's happened. But you can change the account because it's related to a token. So let's erase the token. So we can send snaps to another person, but you have to have the profile public or use an, uh, an account that is friend of everyone. The only account friend of everyone, you know, is team Snapchat. So if you raise the token and you change the username, you just can just be posting the snaps to every user. You can send every image you want. So this was a flow that we discovered on Christmas. It's a fail for a Snapchat. And it seems that a Snapchat, a Snapchat noticed that the request token and the username were important. On the uh, 6th of January, they fixed it without notice everyone. So we like the full disclosure and we want to have a chat with them. It's like, hey man, there's 10 days until this move on as you are screwing up our presentation. So we just sent them a message, but they didn't give us any response. So there is no way to spoof the usernames anymore. So we thought, we, what can we do again? The other idea was because uh, people are saying that there is a lot of spam coming in the, in the last weeks. And the company said that they want to apologize for unwanted snaps. They let you know the team is working, revolve, uh, resolving the issue. OK, so now we have to use the request token. The request token, it's made with the password you get the original, the, the original token, and then the, the timestamp. If you have the timestamp, it's because this, it has uh, some specific uh, time value to be valid. So we then try to make the, the, the spam. And if you see, these are the same captures. This is from 14 of January, and this is the same token used on 18 of January. The same token can be used for days. Uh, it's supposed to be only once. So what can we do? <laughs> what we're going to do, we have in intercepted with, a, with, with verb. So what we are going to do is like uh, see if we can send. So any, any malicious attacker could just send it to the, to the attacker, uh, to the attacker part of the verb, and then get the, the receipt, erase it, and say, like, I want to put my contact list I have from a 4 million leak database. And what could be happening right now? We have put first half our username, and we will be sending our toy from uh, Smukon to all the database. You know, you have four, five, ten days with a valid request token, but you can do like 4 million, uh, uh, 4 million requests, like in 40 minutes. So. The spam problem is real. But <laughs> another thing uh, we wanted to know is, yes, well, I can send these snaps to everyone. OK. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to change the media ID just to send it a lot of message to, to some user. I'm going to use uh, some random values for media ID and then try to make a denial service. So we start the attack. Uh, have only one thread, but it doesn't. Uh, uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, it, it works for us because uh, we can sell like 32 snaps per request to almost any user. So you can see we are spamming the user. This is my username. Don't worry. Don't want to get, get in jail. So what we are going to do is send it as much as much message as many messages as, as we can. Uh, we, we wanted to, to do some kind of denial of service and see if the application can support it. But there is one point that when you receive a lot of snaps, the problem is that you will likely get something like this. Last update. 
and then you're out. You're out that you can connect to the Snapchat until the, the denial of service is over. So there is no uh, countermeasures, there is no protection for Snapchat. You can uh, spam any user you have. In the last weeks, we can send uh, snaps with the team Snapchat. So there is a lot of work to do. So I'm going to uh, let Pablo speak to you about uh, the things uh, of WhatsApp. Hello. Well, WhatsApp is an, uh, an application that came from USA. It is interesting to compare it with Twitter, that has 230 million of users per month, or uh, Instagram, that has 150 million. It, it, WhatsApp says that it has 400 million mobile active users. It is the uh, largest and most used application in message, in instant messaging in Brazil, South Africa, Indonesia, and also in Spain that reach 95% of users, all the people who use WhatsApp. And they usually send, uh, they say they receive 10 billion messages per day. To know, to reach an idea what kind of messages we are talking about, there are 400 and 400, near 420 million of messages per hour, 7 million messages per minute, or 115,000 messages per second. They, in here, we, you see the numbers of growing of uh, users. They were 200 in April, 250 in June, and 300 in August. And you see two bars, the dark bar is, is uh, lower than the, the green bar because they say they receive more, something around 11 billion messages, but they, is, they, are, they are receive uh, 20 million because WhatsApp usually use groups that a message is sent to three or four uh, of your friends, the same message. So, we think that WhatsApp is, is doing to SM, SM messages the same that Skype said with uh, international calls. This application has several, a long history of security faults. It starts uh, sending the messages in clear and plain text. So if you are in the same Wi-Fi, you, can, you could see all the messages that were in the, for example, in Starbucks, if you use it. Uh, then, in I think in 2012, they start uh, encrypting the messages, and uh, they commit a, a, a fault that was the user ID of your account in WhatsApp is your mobile number, and the password of that uh, account is the uh, email of of the mobile or the MAC address in iOS devices. So. Uh, in November, in, in Barcelona, we, we saw a tool that let you read the messages that a client receives, if you know the, the MAC address, for example, of an iPhone. They also let you to, to store remote, uh, virus, program, HTML, JavaScript, almost all type of, of files. Uh, the only one they don't allow you were PHP. And you can do it, this and, uh, without telling the, the, the username. There was a public storage for you. They also store the database of messages inside the phone in, in plain text. It's not encrypted. And another issue was that an unknown hacker published a website where you can change the status of the users. There was an app, a uh, phantom application that was, for, uh, was removed without any explication, explanation. Uh, Priniaka worm that was spread through your contact list. WhatsApp Boyer is a, a Spanish website where you uh, introduce the mobile phone of a person and you can see the status, the the photograph of, of his or her profile, um, and also the, the sentence you use in your contact list, for your contact. 
Um, and, and it, WhatsApp doesn't have any kind of protections or only receive the messages of your friends. So anybody can send a message to everybody. So spam is also a threat in, in WhatsApp that is not fixed. And they also have a bad in, uh, encryption uh, process of the messages. So this is where, why we are here. Uh, these are some threats that are presented for, for WhatsApp. Uh, still a genie that uh, allow a, pe a person to spy and dump instant messages from the mobile phone. Uh, an email fake app WhatsApp notification was also I received in Google, in Gmail. Uh, an, Android, an Android game that uh, steal your conversations. And WhatsApp spy that was a fake spy application. I don't know why everybody wants to spy you. So we got an idea what, what we can do with this. So we, we think about to add three layers of security on WhatsApp's uh, messages. The first one was to uh, encrypt the messages so when they are stored on WhatsApp servers or they, they are not uh, visible, they are not in clear. And when uh, the other, the second layer tries to uh, not to communicate directly because sometimes uh, from metadata you start with the people you talk. So if you change the number with you are talking to reach the, the final destination, this is not a one point one to one conversation. And the last one we think to change and to store to to send the messages not through the WhatsApp service, th although through a own XMP. XMPP server that you are owning. All of these things is why. <laughs> I let Jaime continue. Well, thank you. I, I've seen Mike. Thank you, Mike. I, I know you were trying to hide. You have free beer all day. He's paying. So let's speak about surveillance. You know that the, there were some kind of reports uh, leaked by Snowden that in, uh, shows that, that there was some kind of mechanism called PRISM that trying to monitor all the information about the, the, the people, all the communications, all the, all the texting, the social networks. So. If they are able to uh, get all the emails and all the information made data about us, we ask if not only Microsoft, Google, Apple, some, uh, all these companies could be um, inside this, this prism. Maybe it could be that WhatsApp, with so much information going through its network, could be inside too. Well, it seems like uh, just today, uh, they show up that uh, uh, people from NSA uh, were spying to uh, the SMS. So they take like 200 million text messages a day through all the earth, including location, contact networks, credit card details. So on average, you can see that there is 5 million missed calls. There is uh, the details of uh, 1.6 million uh, uh, word of question a day, all the roaming alerts, and over 800,000 financial, uh, financial tra um, transactions, excuse me. So, could be instant messaging the next target, if it's not now. We, we, are, going, uh, we are going to explain some of the things we have done with, within WhatsApp, including the adding a new layer of encryption, adding some anonymity, and uh, having your own XMPP server. So let me first explain how does uh, WhatsApp works inside. You know, this is the, the capture of a, of, a, of a packet from WhatsApp. It's trying to uh, start the negotiations for the, for the login. In this case, uh, you're going to see that you have the, the X bytes, and you have then the, the meaning of each one. That's because uh, WhatsApp used some kind of a special version of XMPP. It's called Fan X. MPP, and what they do is all the constants, they reduce them to only one byte. 
That's because uh, WhatsApp is used on mobile phones and you have to reduce all the size of the packets you are sending. And this is a decrypted packet uh, we, have uh, uh, we have found uh, by uh, sniffing all the communication from our phone. So the first thing that WhatsApp tried to do is log in with a new device. So when you buy uh, WhatsApp or you download from the from their store, uh, you have to send your your phone number to the server, and then it answers you with an SMS with a code. You put the, this code on your telephone, and then it begins negotiating, and it gives you uh, one password. Uh, in this case, they use SASL uh, mechanism. It's called WhatsApp Authorization One. Uh, it's like what we are uh, seeing. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. But the first thing you do is try to log with your uh, mobile number, and the server instead instead asking you for the uh, password, he asks you for a challenge. In this case, uh, he's uh, he's sending you um, a challenge, and what you are going to do is is use PKB uh, DF2 with the password, and this uh, then using SHA1. Uh, as the hash function, and then you pick up the first uh, 20 bytes, and then you answer to the server. That's when you know you are connected. There is no uh, transmission of the of the password. That's a good thing because uh, until now, WhatsApp was doing is sending the the password directly. So we began uh, thinking if our messages were secure. These are words of of WhatsApp. It's like. WhatsApp communication between your phone and our servers is fully encrypted. Yeah, fully encrypted. Yes, but not the way you would like. So they are using RC4. You know, is this uh, widely used? It was designed by Rob Rivest. You maybe know RC4, but some flows that were uh, exploited in Microsoft some years ago. And it has two stages, but it don't really uh, matter here. So if they are using the encryption and uh, you can use RC4 uh, in, in a good way, where is the problem? So let's speak about Alice and Bob. So suppose Alice wants to send a message to Bob through a, a public channel and they have a circuit. So uh, since Alice um, is very, very lazy, she doesn't uh, know a shit about string first, she decides to reuse the same key. So uh, there, there, will, there will be one person that gets all the message and do the XOR function, and she will have the uh, XOR function of the cipher text. You know that every time Alice encrypts a uh, message, God kills a kitten. Yeah, you know, you know, it's always Alice, always Alice. So what, what, we, what you can do, uh, we, we saw a proof of concept in the, in the last conference, is attacking it. It's like you are using the same XOR uh, password. So what we are going to do is like do some kind of plain, tain, plain text attack uh, called crypt dragging. And what we are going to do is guess a word that may appear in the, in the message. Uh, and you know there is a top list of uh, every language with the most used words. And then we are going to encode it and try in every position until it gives us a, a, a clear text. So when we have one character, what we are going to do is, be, is then beginning like uh, testing all the positions until we can uh, we can find the, the original message. Uh, we are doing this uh, the manual way. Uh, we suppose that there, there can, we can use an automatic uh, way to do this because we know if you uh, get all the connections from the beginning, you know that the first message has some bytes in several positions. So you have only to try what character will be in that position to know the original byte. But there were other attacks we have found. The first one was attacking the client. So what we're going to do is using Josup, it's an API implementation of the WhatsApp uh, protocol. And we're going to send a message to our mobile phone, you see. And what we're going to do is trying to crash the application. We are trying to encode some special characters and send directly to the phone. And you will see that when you send it, WhatsApp shower. So every time you want to enter the, the WhatsApp, it will crash. So if, if, if you have sent maybe uh, someone, some kind of works that you deserve, maybe you can send this kind of message and he will be unable to recover the conversation anymore. 
But there were another thing we, we, we thought that, well, we have the communication, it's used the HMAC for, for having the, the, the uh, consistent message, but maybe we can spoof the message. You know, it's like WhatsApp doesn't store the message on its servers, so if we can fake all the message and you can do it a forensic to my phone and you find there is nothing wrong, maybe I can demand you, for example, and you have a legal problem because I'm putting in your mouth what you didn't say. So maybe I, I, I'm going to tell that you have threatened me. And the only thing you have to do is like the, the, the message has a special field. And it's like a checksum, but it doesn't uh, test if the original checksum has changed. So we have the first message from, the, from, the, from my mate that's called this Mucon contact. And what we're going to do is throw the application through a VPN and we'll con begin controlling all the message that we are receiving. So we're going to first try to do the first thing. For sure, it's a, it's a fake number. Because if you can see, there won't be any phone number that it's all zeros. And you can see there is true, because uh, not that part. If you can see, there's only a little message. This is, this is not a contact that I have had to, the, to, my, to my phone because the original one, you see, was this MUCON and you can call, you can edit the contact, you can get the information, but this one doesn't have it. So I can put whatever uh, telephone number I want. But we then go and say like, hey, I can communicate with him and send it like a fake conversation. But only <coughs> does this only really works from numbers? May I put some special characters in the in the phone number, and then we try again. We send a message, <coughs> excuse me, and then, hey, the contact is I'm too elite. Yeah, it's, it's it's a fake number, but you can see the power of this is, if we are able to capture the token, we can do a man in the middle. Maybe, uh, what we can do is send the client a message from the server telling, hey man. There is a new upgrade which lets you call wherever you want and see free new pictures of the, all the girls you want. And then download this APK. The user install it and it's own. So what we, are, uh, uh, what we have developed is a, a new uh, temporal solution because it will work until WhatsApp uh, change the game, upgrades the protocol, and then we go uh, behind them and it's adding all these kind of uh, layers of, of encryption that uh, Paolo will, will show you now. Well, the first security we, we said is an additional encryption layer. What we do is, uh, as we can control the conversation and we are in, what we are going to do is that uh, uh, Bob and Alice uh, Bob is red one, Alice the blue one. Uh, before the message uh, reads the WhatsApp service, is going to be open. Uh, we remove the R4 encryption layer. We get the text and we apply then an, an encryption to the text. And then we reconstruct the message with R4, R3, R3, <laughs> RC4 and send to the WhatsApp service. And when, the, when Alice get the message, before it reach her phone, uh, we again open the message and remove the encryption layer so she can read the message. Uh, we get uh, some troubles because on, on iOS versions, uh, the, the challenge the server sent in some versions weren't clear, but when in, in next, in, in in, in some versions in the future, they changed the, the, the challenge and the challenge was uh, in, the first, in the first communication in the login. So what we do is to flip some bytes of that challenge and WhatsApp server responds us with a clear challenge so we can enter the conversation. And for the second mobile, we do it again. When sending a message, what you can see here is the client pilot and uh, there are some fields that are uh, enhanced 
this, the, the second message, the, the CY message, is the cipher message we receive, and TY message is the greeted message, and it's four bytes length uh, less of, the, of length because we remove HMAC, uh, HMAC because we have to regenerate them, and uh, the 200 we, we, we have there in green is uh, saying that the message is, is sent to the red, the red color, the, the red box is the phone number. Here's 34609 and so on. And on green we have the the, the text. Here is Bello. We apply a, a, a key and the message is gone in red and is not legible. It's not readable. And we send it to to WhatsApp to WhatsApp servers. So when when then you receive this message on, on the other phone, you open it, you have a 65 that says the, that the message is from the server and you have the phone that sends that message, this is the, the red box, and you, you've got the text in, in encrypted and we, we don't read it, and you send the, the, the key, you got it again in bello in clear text. So that's the encryption layer. The program starts and we are going through the VPN. He's going to connect. This has the troubles because we have uh, slow network connections and some other troubles. <laughs> and here are the messages we send. Here you can see the login and the challenge, and the message I sent to Jaime. He responds me, and you can see hello world down. And again, I send, it, I send Jaime another text. That you can see, it's fine. And the cipher, the cipher text there. And here is the, the hello message. And the first message I sent to Jaime that is 23 byte, bytes length. And here is the cipher text and how the program decrypted and plain, set it again and explain. Without the key, this, this works because Jaime and me, we have a private key that we share. And without that key, what you will get is something like this or something like this. Well, anonymity. To what, what I was telling, uh, to remove the identity or the direct connections with your friends. So what, what do we do is we generate some Yusuf clients. It's a free API for making Yusuf to interchange uh, WhatsApp messages from your computer. And we create some bots with some virtual numbers that are not uh, usually on phones. And uh, when Bob contacts Ali, uh, Alice. Instead of reaching dialy, the phone number is going to be changed to the first bot. The, each bot has something like a route table, table that w when you receive a message from someone, you know where to, to send it to the next hope. And the final layer we, we add is to use our, our uh, XMPP server. So WhatsApp is not going to have the, 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 the message in or or not, or not cifered. He's going, he's not going to be to have the, the message. How we do this? Well, we get the, again the message. We are in the conversation of WhatsApp. And what we do is to get the, the text and the destination number and a message ID that has all the WhatsApp uh, messages and we pull it together and send to our uh, XMPP server. So the other contact will, will enter our XMPP server and get that message. And when, when the message arrives, it's going to be able to reconstruct. The text is going to be replaced by our wildcard character. In this case, are Gs, because we like Gs. It could be <laughs> any other character. And WhatsApp is going to see 
this on his service. When the, this message reaches the other person, it's going to be reconstructed. And we say this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, we have time for a few questions. Please come raise your hand and I'll bring the mic to you. But before I let you guys ask a question, I have a couple of my own. Um, I'm interested in the security properties, the anonymity. Um, when you go to each interim hop, do each of those hops have their own keys and are they re-signing things? Um, uh, they could. They could have. Um, because this looks a great deal like onion routing and you could, you could um, take advantage of the, th the things that onion routing does to enhance the anonymity of, yeah. of each individual hop. That way no observer who only has access to one side can, can see, um, um, unless you had a complete yeah. global access, would you be able to, f to find sender and receiver? Okay. So, um, <laughs> the switch. Is that better? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, any questions? Um, in your last example where you're using your own uh, XMPP server for the message contents, do I understand correctly, you're still passing, a message still passes through uh, WhatsApp's uh, uh, infrastructure, it's just that the message body has been re removed and you replace it uh, in the reader. Is that, first of all, is that, is that, ac is that, am I understanding it right? And second, do you have a plan to completely take them out of the loop and just modify the client so that it talks to your server so, instead Excuse of me, could you speak louder because I, I, I can't hear. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a lot of so, noise here. Excuse oh, me. Great. Sure. So, uh, when you anonymize, or not, not the anonymization case, the last case when XMP. you remove the message contents, are you still passing, you are still passing a message to WhatsApp, they just can't see the contents. Is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Do you have a plan to remove them from the loop entirely and make the client talk only to your server and then your server deliver the message to another client without them ever seeing the message go by? Well, uh, at first you could, but you have, you have to notify the client that it has some kind of, of, message, of, of message waiting. So first of all, you have to, to give uh, an acknowledgement to the client saying, that, hey, you have a message, you have to retrieve it. Like, this was a proof, proof of concept. We, we, we tried to, to only see that we can modify all the messages in the encryption using another server, but at first, it would be possible. The only thing you have to do is try to intercept the same way the communications, but let the WhatsApp know it has a message, and then change the routes, change the routes of, the, of the packets and throw it through your XMPP server, and you would be free of, of the official server. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions? All right, then we thank the speakers and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.